I'm here at the home of William E. Brazley. We're here for a benefit for ETA, Ebony Talent Associates, and the benefit is for a new building that they expect to uh, erect sometime soon, and William Brazley is the architect, and I wanted him to tell us about the building and about the benefit. Well, Dr. Peace, the building will be uh, replacing the existing ETA facility, and uh, the benefit here is to help raise funds for that facility. Um, as you know, it will be seating 400 uh, individuals in the new facility. We have a slideshow uh, in the, uh, you know, on the premise here that shows uh, the facility and the number of people and the different functions that would be um, in the new ETA facility. Uh, the approximate cost of the new facility will be about $12 million and uh, from what I understand we already have four million dollars in hand uh, with another two million dollars promised by the city of Chicago. Hopefully we will break ground for this new facility uh, in approximately six months. So we are very excited about it. Uh, we're really excited about this show that's uh, going on here and we're happy that you're a part of this and in the community and being able to uh, have your daughter as one of the exhibitors. So we're happy about uh, what we're doing for ETA. I'm a board member and have been a board member for approximately uh, 14 years. And um, we have a wonderful board. So I'm excited to be doing this and happy to be a member of ETA. All right, I'm back and I'm proud and I'm here with the president of ETA, the founder and a whole bunch of other hats she wears. Co-founder. The co-founder, all right. Mm -hmm. I want you to tell us something about the history of ETA. I know that most people in the Chicago metropolitan area are very familiar with ETA, but it doesn't hurt so. to get it from the source. No, it never hurts to repeat it, but we're in our 30th year. Started in July 1971 by four people essentially who thought it was important to manage and control ourselves with the talent that we had. And then as we moved along it became clear that there were very few if any opportunities for young people to study, to develop their talent, to develop their craft, have performance opportunities as the four of us had had as we were growing up. And so that led to ETA, Creative Arts Foundation. And as we moved along with our training program, professional training, which we have continued over these 30 years, starting with children at age six, of course teenagers and adults with acting, music, dance, lighting, sound, stage management, videotaping, so that it encompasses the uh, performing as well as the technical arts. But as we moved along on that sphere, it became clear to us that the end of training is, of course, performance, and that's when it comes together. And so we've moved on that track and we've expanded. Uh, we're the first, probably in the country, to get our own facility, which we managed to do in 1979 <laughs> with the help of one Dempsey Travis. And then in 1994, we established an endowment, and we were the first to do that because the board of directors as well as the staff and other volunteers believe that it's absolutely essential to have money which is growing so that at some point in time we can use those dollars to undergird our operating budget. We're still moving as some of us began in the 60s and 70s to be self-determining and self-sustaining. That's in COLA. And <laughs> Excuse me, welcome. We're actually doing an interview for cable, but we welcome you to still enjoy the exhibit while we're doing the interview. Right, right. This painting is called Wings of Freedom. It's by Abiola Atencola, and it's a still life that has a lot of energy and emotion exuded by the colors that he uses. The next painting is part of a 
work ex that's on exhibit at Nicole Smith Gallery, and it's by Isud Funkop, and it's called A Simple Gathering. But if you really look at the texture and the color and the technique, it's simply amazing. And that's Isud Funkop, uh, featured by Nicole Smith Gallery. The next painting is Guitar by Abiola Atencola. It's acrylic on canvas, and I really like how he's using the Crayola to add emphasis and design and form. It's simply wonderful. Next to that is A Distant Rose by Esud Funkap, also acrylic on canvas. And as well, this is beautifully done with the colors and the texture and just the softness that's exuded, exuded, it really just jumps out at you and very well pre pre presented as well. And this again is work by Esud Funkap from Nicole Smith Gallery. Coming around to the front is one of my paintings entitled Soulful Trumpeter and it's canvas, acrylic, and mixed media. And what I'm doing here is actually something called canvas sculpting where the actual instrument is formed from canvas just as canvas is stretched over the stretcher bars. I'm actually molding the canvas into the shape of the subject matter. The tie and the musician's entire suit is a collage of different paintings so you see the marbleization and the jacket and the pants that has all been coll collaged onto the separate canvas and then lastly the musician himself is created through mixed media where I'm using ground pieces of iron and I'm oxidizing them to give you the rich hues of our skin tones and the more I oxidize the more highlights and shadowing effects that are created but last but not least is an effect that I'm using color to create sound so the music can actually be felt coming off the instrument and out of the uh, instrument onto the canvas and it really speaks in terms of how passionate the relationship is between the artist and the instrument and that again is soulful trump trumpeter and you can almost feel the soul that's being exuded by the musician. The next painting on the walk is a paint, an original painting by Jason Jones entitled Bass Chemist. This is one of Jason's trademark paintings where he's doing a very interesting subject matter, a female bass player. But I like how his use of colors and his earth tones and it's a technique that he really does well with and it's very well presented and it's acrylic on canvas and of course just another example of the beautiful work that we have at our fingertips in our community. Next is a wonderful work by Alan Stringfellow entitled Dance 2. It's a collage and it is a example of one of our masters in our community. Alan Stringfellow has exhibited all over the world and he is represented at Nicole Smith Gallery and it's wonderfully done the way he uses colors to add depth and energy and movement and the collage effect and how it speaks to you is so appropriately done and beautifully and immaculately presented and that's Dance 2 by Alan Stringfellow. To my very right is another painting by Jason Jones entitled Mud Cloth and Mask. It's acrylic gold leaf on paper and I like how the presentation in black really makes the artwork jump out at you. Once again, Jason Jones, Mud Cloth and Mask. The next painting on the walk is No More Than Two by Floyd Atkins. It's a mixed media on canvas and it's a collage format by Floyd where he's really speaking in regards to a lot of different subject matters. He's got the Black Arts Movement by Larry Neal. He's got information, the 400 richest people in America and it just really speaks about our society and the different things that happen and the emotions surrounding it. And this is a new style and a new subject matter that Floyd has been approaching and I think it's very wonderfully done. Next we have 
work by Melvin King, one of our legends in the Chicago community. This is the Chicago Renaissance painting, and if for all of you who are familiar with the Chicago Renaissance Festival that recently took place, Melvin created that image, and it's a wonderful use of imagery, color, and dimensionalism created through shadowing that Melvin is really known for, where you see the, the shades and the, the effects created with the pleating throughout the painting. But that, once again, is Chicago Renaissance by Melvin King. To your left, you have Leak Vendor by Frank Lusant. It's an oil on canvas. Frank is represented by Nicole Smith Galleries, and it's very well done. The shadowing with yet texture underneath that comes through, it's very well presented and very well done. Below that you have Dixieland Jazz Band by Alan Stringfellow. It's a collage, but it's very interesting how he's using music notes to symbolize the sound and the color and the feeling and the emotion. Alan Stringfellow, once again, is one of the great legends from the Chicagoland area, and this is just another example of his wonderful work. To the left of that, you have Good Woman by Abiola Atencola. It's acrylic on canvas, and it's just a wonderful example of how he uses color. And I think he's just a one of the foremost or forerunners in terms of how to use color intelligently and properly while, while still bringing emotion in. It's very well done. The purples, the oranges, the bowl of fruit, the shadowing, everything is done in perfect perspective. Below that you have I Read White Papers by Floyd Atkins. It's acrylic on canvas. It's another beautiful piece. I love his use of color, the purple and the magentas, and the way they jump out at you. To the right of that, you have I Feel the Music. This is one of my paintings, acrylic and canvas with mixed media. And it really speaks about the musician feeling the music coming from the ground. It's almost like it's in his roots, and it comes out in the form of music through the instruments. This again is using the ground iron medium, which is oxidized, and then the color is sound coming off of the painting. To the, to the right of that, there's a painting called Time to Go, Summer of 99. That's by Floyd Atkins, and this is a trademark style of Floyd Atkins, the way that he uses the elongated forms and the shadows along with the use of color. He uses strong colors to give you the feel of a summer night and the way that the clouds in the sky take their own colors that aren't necessarily the blues or the sky blue or the light blues that we typically see. To the right of that is a painting called Rain Over Chicago and this is a new release of mine and it's oil on canvas and it's actually an oil wash where I'm actually removing the oil to create some of the shadowing effects. But what I really like is this, you have the skyline of Chicago, but then below that you have people in the rain under rum umbrellas. And the closer and the more you look at it, the more you start to see the people and the attitudes and the emotions and the water splashing below them, and the people running by. You really get a feel of movement. And Jones and Todd Joplin's greatest. And Jason has a way of using different sheet music to, and he expresses the sheet music in the form of artwork. And his trademark gold leaf pattern is used here. And it's really interesting to see how it jumps off at you and the framing really accents the whole subject matter. Directly below that you have Loving Eyes by myself and what that subject matter really speaks about is how we as people should look for the best in others. When you first meet someone, look for the best in them. So it's an abstract that expresses that whole subject matter. Next to that is One Night Out by Jason Jones and it really speaks to the 
beauty of a night out and going out to dance and enjoying yourself. It's gold leaf on canvas with sand intermixed with the gold leaf. One of my paintings entitled Midnight Dance. And Midnight Dance is part of a skyline series that really speaks of how our skyline is a point of inspiration and a place that is enjoyed by many. And you often see a lot of celebrations, the Taste of Chicago, outdoor parties. But the three-dimensionalism here used with the mixed media really gives you a lot of movement and feeling under the skyline and then the perspective gets smaller as you get close to the horizon line showing that this is a grand party but within that grandness there's a lot of micro situations where you really see the emotion between the two people dancing and you can see the expressiveness and the energy that's eluded as well. The next painting on the walk is Trust by Jason Jones and it's a, from his dance series and it really speaks about how dancers have to have trust within each other and between each other in order to perform well and she must have trust in him and it's gold leaf on canvas and it's very well executed. Yeah. The Espoir by Frank Lussant, it's a painting from the Nicole Smith Gallery Frank is represented by Nicole and his use of shadowing is almost lifelike. I mean, his use of color, his use of perspective is simply magnificent. It's a wonderful job and a wonderful if time could stop. And it really deals with a moment in Venice where you really wish you could stop in time and you really get a feel for two people on a gondola under fireworks just enjoying each other but yet everything is happening around them but yet they're caught in their own individual moment directly below that you have directly directly below that you have the last two paintings on the gallery walk which are by Abiola Atencola, Music Coupes, and it's a beautiful woman with a violin and the colors that expresses the feeling and the moment are blues, greens, oranges, reds, and yellows, and it's just excellent how the whole mood is just portrayed. The shadowing is perfect. It's just a really wonderful piece that has a really warm feeling portrayed through the colors. And last but not least is Side View of a Woman. It's also another perspective where all shadows and all the colors are communicated through different hues in, our, in his palette. And once again, he's just doing a wonderful job in expressing himself. Side View of a Woman by Abiola Atencola.
She's also our goddaughter, whether she thinks she is or not, she is. <laughs> and she also works uh, with ETA. She does a lot of things. And I'm, we're going, she's the mistress of ceremony for the evening, and she's going to in introduce others. So I will turn this over to Betty Lewis. Okay, go ahead. I'd just like to first say thank you to Mr. and Mrs. Brazley for having us all at their home and putting on this wonderful event tonight. <laughs> I'm sure most of you know the purpose for this evening's event is to raise money for ETA's new capital development fund. ETA is building a gorgeous new facility that will help out the community. It also breeds a place for art and the performing arts, and so it's a very important cause tonight. All the art that you see downstairs, we encourage you to purchase because 20% of the proceeds will go to the Capital Development Committee, to the Capital Development Fund, and 100% of the proceeds from the silent auction items will go also. So we encourage you to come bid and help out our cause, as well as get some gorgeous art for your own home. And I'd next like to introduce Avina Joan Brown, who's the president of ETA Creative Arts Foundation. Thank you, Betty. I am noted for being long-winded <laughs> and direct. But well, I'm not going to take a long time this afternoon because this is a wonderful day coming. 30 years old we are. That in itself is outstanding. We started in 1971 believing that it was important for us to take care and control our own talent. In the process of that discovery, we realized that so many of us took a lesson on Saturday as we were growing up, and those opportunities no longer existed. So we set about the business of developing a professional training program in the performing and technical arts and starting at age six. And of course, we have teenagers and adults. The end of training is, of course, performance. And that brought to our consciousness that no matter how much training you have, how well you can perform, if you don't have a place to do it, as Oscar used to say, no place to be somebody, which led us, with the help of one Dempsey Travis, to secure the facility in which we now reside. We have a wonderful board of directors. Some of them are here. Wonderful staff, some of them are here. But as we've gone on this journey, it occurred to the board of directors that if we are going to be around for generations to come, we had to do several things. One, establish an endowment. We're the first African-American cultural institution in the whole United States and the world to do it. We set an initial goal to 1.5 million. It now sits at 1.6. We're not touching the capital, the principal, until a later point in time when we can use those proceeds, that interest, to be increasingly self-determining and self-sufficient. The second thing we realized, that we did not want to become landlocked on the corner of 7558 South South Chicago Avenue, in case you don't know where it is, but as opportunities presented themselves, we bought additional properties across the street. The first was the Cecil Troy property known as Grove Fresh, the corner known as the Taylor, and most recently, the Vine Corps property, which goes from 75th Street. And we now own the total block across from us, from 75th 
to 76th Street. This board of directors has done that with their vision. And the other thing which is very important to our growth and development is leadership and particularly issues of succession. We're constantly looking with our eyes peeled for those us and coming. So when I see this baby coming, it makes me happy. That is the future. We have consciously added to our board of directors younger people, those up and coming as we say. So there are many opportunities to enter for the preservation of this institution. Our mission basically is the preservation, promulgation, and perpetuation of the African and African American aesthetic. In other words, in the tell our story in the first voice as only we can tell it. Last year, slightly under 100,000 people participated in all of our various programs. I'm saying this with the hope that you will read the material in this kit. When you read this, you will know as much as I do, and hopefully will be as inspired as we all are to leave something, a legacy, for the next generation and generations to come. If you want to know more about the specificity of the design, the master plan committee, the board of directors in terms of this expanded facility, there is a wonderful PowerPoint presentation in the theater, which was donated to us by Ms. Peggy Brazley, who is a member of the Capital Campaign Committee. It took us 30 years, but I think we got you now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, I would just like to add that as a young person, I went to ETA once a week, every week, and performed and learned and I grew up in this community and I didn't have a lot of other black role models and young black friends to know that we're all beautiful and that we can have something to contribute to society. Um, I'm on my way to graduate from law school now and I learned at ETA that I can do it and that I can, be and I can enunciate and I can share my voice with people and that everything is important and it really was a learning lesson to me. I encourage you all to get down to ETA if you never have take in a show, walk around, look at the art, and just see that we really do have positive things to offer, and that ETA is a great place and a great um, cause to be involved with. So lastly, I would like to introduce Mrs. Nancy McKeever, who is the chairwoman of the board at ETA. And I thought I'd call down some board members who are here today, too. Lucille Burris, Mike Lewis, and Willie Taylor, Mary Ann King is here too. Mary Ann Davis. King Davis, thank you. There's just a few of our board members who are here today. Is anybody else here that I don't know? Yes, Who's here now? Step over here, back. I just want everybody to really see you. These are some of the hard, hard working board members of ETA. And Bill Bracey. And Bill Bracey, of course. There are 31 of them. There are 31 of us. Alvin is still writing the scripts. <laughs> anyway, we've worked really hard, and I'd like to say thank you because so many of you have helped us do all the things that Alvin has talked about. The endowment, you've helped us do that. You've helped us run all this. I mean, you've helped us have our operating uh, capital and so on through the years. And all the times we've asked you for help, you've always been there for us and we appreciate that and we say thank you and thank you again. And now we're saying thank you, thank you for the money that you're going to give to us to help <laughs> us to have this, to complete this. And we have much of it already, but the final part of it is the part that we need from individuals for this 10 million so that we can do this beautiful, you see this fabulous, wonderful house that Bill did for himself, he and Peggy here, so you know that the expansion is going to be just wonderful in the Afrocentric mode, and you've seen the kind of rendering that we're going to have, and all it's going to take is the money that we get to finish it, and the only part that we really need now is the part from individuals, because we've done a great job, and we lose still. We're flying, aren't we? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, I believe we can fly. <laughs> <laughs> we're flying now. 
So we want to thank you again, and we're saying as Milton, who is now Milton Davis, who is now the chairman of our executive committee, would say, what does he always say? Dig a little deeper. Dig a little deeper. <laughs> so we're just saying thank you again for all your support over the years, and thank you, and uh, go past and look at 75th from 76th Street to see how we cleared the land. It's all cleared, ready for us to break ground as soon as we have the commitment for all of the money. And um, as we said, come on, parties are great, it's fun to come and eat and have a good time, but in the end, it is about raising money. So thanks again. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I just want to say one thing more. Don't forget, now I don't want you guys to leave. Everyone go back to where you were, go back and look at the art, revisit it again. Now that you know the purpose, look at it again. And don't forget the silent auction. All of these pieces were donated to ETA, so. 20%. No, these were donated to ETA. This is a silent auction. The pieces downstairs, if you buy, we, the ETA will get 20%. So it's really important. And I know you see things that you like, because I like everything I see down there. I love the house. <laughs> We'd like to introduce Andre Guichard, who is one of the artists, and he can tell you a little bit about the artists that have painted some of the paintings and some of the artists that have donated the work that you see upstairs. So let's welcome him. Thank you again for supporting such a wonderful call. ETA, as we all know, is a part of the community and has helped not only people enjoy the arts, but have helped several artists to expose themselves. In addition to that, I want to thank the Brazleys for their hospitality. I think this is just one of the most beautiful venues and environments for art, and I'm so happy to be here. And I think not only is it a great opportunity for us, but it's also a great opportunity for you as collectors. We have WPA artists such as Adam Stringfellow, Melvin King, a legend in our area, uh, myself, Andre Bichard, Jason Joy, Floyd Atkins, uh, Abiola Atincola, and you have an opportunity to save a piece of history in your home as well as support something very wonderful and beautiful, ETA. So thank you to the artists. Thank you again, and I'd like to introduce the artists individually. Jason E. Jones, we're in the crowd if you can come forward. Jason, Jason's style is, his trademark is the gold leaf. So when you look around at the different auction items and the items in the basement, you'll see the texture of the gold leaf intermix. And that's the style that he's known for. I'm, I use more texture and color, and you can find that in the work here and downstairs. Another artist that's here today that I did mention earlier is Deborah Hand. She's a sculptor, Deborah Hand. Deborah Hand has a wonderful style in which she really emphasizes the parts of the body that the dancers use. And it's almost abbreviated or exaggerated in the calves and the thigh muscles, but I think she does it in such an elegant way that you really know that this is a true dancer exuding grace and power. And here's an example right here that uh, has been donated and is a part of our silent auction. Beautiful work of art. Another artist, Floyd Atkins. Floyd is here. Floyd has a wonderful style. His black and whites have been published in various publications. And he also has a new series of collages that you can find downstairs that really deals with today's urban society and the issues that are challenging us right now. Floyd Atkins, once again, is another collectible artist, and we hope that you take a look at the work here and in the basement. Also, while we're waiting for Alan Abiola Atencola. <laughs> Abiola's use of color is not only rich and vibrant, but it's just a 
wonderful use of shadows as well. He, his work is here, and he also has a lot of other work downstairs in the main exhibit. Now, when I introduce Alan Stringfellow, I would also I'd like to introduce Nicole in the Nicole Smith Gallery. Nicole, please come forward. Well, without further ado, I'd like to say thank you again. Please, please look again at the artwork. Collect as much original artwork as you can, and thank you for coming. Betty, Betty's going out again while you're taking pictures. Go on, Betty. I would just like to reiterate that the reason we're here tonight is to raise money for ETA. Um, programs like this cannot continue to thrive and succeed unless we support them as a community. All of us could stand here and talk about how great it is until we're blue in the face, but if we don't support these types of initiatives, um, they won't continue to go on. So please, everybody, go downstairs, buy art, feel free to make a donation to ETA, no matter how big or how small, it will be appreciated and much needed. I'd just like to thank you all for coming. Go back, have a great time. Dance, eat, thank you for coming. Alafia again. And again and again, because I'm here having the best time. I'm at William Brazley's house, and he's doing a benefit for ETA, and he has a lot of wonderful art here, and he has a lot of wonderful artists here. And he has one of his guests is Nicole Smith of Nicole Gallery, and she has come and brought some beautiful pieces, and she's even brought an artist with her, one of whom uh, is going to be at her gallery in March. So I'm going to let Nicole and the artist who she's uh, presenting in March have fun talking to you. Okay. Oh, good afternoon, Dr. Peace. Good afternoon, good afternoon. Nicole. How are you? I'm good. Okay. Um, this, I would like to introduce uh, Debra Hand. She will be one of my feature artists that I will be presenting in March for a show for women where there will be 10 artists represented. So I'd like to give the micro to Debra, to Debra and she will tell you more about her art. Hi, I'm Debra Hand. I'm an artist and I will be, uh, as Nicole said, showing some work at her gallery. Uh, it's a big privilege. Nicole has one of the most outstanding galleries I have ever uh, had the pleasure of walking into. When you walk in the door, beauty just takes over your soul and it doesn't release you until you leave. In fact, it, it goes with you. She has made it her life's work to channel beauty and to make sure that she finds beauty uh, in all corners of the earth and, and she represents it. But her gallery is, is uh, beautiful and it's the kind of place uh, you dream as an artist of being, uh, having your work exhibited. So I am very proud uh, to be standing here with Nicole and looking forward to the exhibit in March. It certainly will be my pleasure to have your work in my gallery. Furthermore, I think we have one thing in common we agree that beauty should be exhibited people should learn more about beauty because art is beauty right and so and we want people to be uplifted so much especially at this time especially at especially this at this time and beauty is one of the things that uplift people right and so i am more committed than ever to bring beauty into this world and to the arts because this is what will help the people to be balanced right you know and so i am very very grateful to be where i am at this time because the people keep coming the last past few weeks mm -hmm. um, just to feel better yes and when they look at the arts that i have in the gallery certainly they have been renewed and I, I am very grateful to God for that. You know? yeah, we're so grateful I, to God for you. Okay, and I look, really look forward to having your work and all these beautiful 
paintings and sculptures by the other women as well that will be part of the show. I'm looking forward to it as well. Yes. I'm back and I'm proud. I'm proud to be here. I've got the three musketeers. Well, actually, I've got three of the very great artists in the city and known even nationally and internationally. I've got on my right and your left, I've got Melvin King, and on my left and your right, I've got Alan Stringfellow, and behind me I have Floyd Atkins, and they are here at this benefit for ETA at the home of William E. Brazley and his wife Peggy Brazley, and they have actually contributed some art so that the proceeds from that art can be used to help ETA and their building fund for their new facility on South Chicago Avenue and they also have some work here that is for sale and it's just a wonderful art exhibit so I just wanted to talk to the Grand Masters for a moment I think I'll let me see I think I'll go to Alan first hello this is Stringfellow Red <laughs> and it's really good to be here this is a fabulous Fabulous home in the first place, a fabulous organization, E.T. And the artwork here is just really, really fabulous, and it all can be purchased. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, some of this fabulous artwork belongs to Stringfellow, and some of this fabulous artwork belongs to Floyd Atkins. Hi, everybody. Again, it's my pleasure to be here, especially in such great company as Mr. Stringfellow and, and Mr. Melvin King and always the great Dr. Peace. Um, again, I'm honored to be here and, and, and it also does my heart a, a world of good to contribute to our arts, performing arts, and so the uh, youngsters of the world can know exactly where we come from. And um, again, like every time I get a chance to put my face in the TV, I always say any venue is a good venue for art. First, I'd like to say good evening to everybody. And again, I'd like to say that this is a very great venture in black art. And we need to do more of this for organizations like ETA Theater. Anything that's like ETA Theater in our community, I'm always glad to be a part of. I hope we do more of this. And the home is beautiful. We thank everybody here for bringing us here and allowing us to use their home. And I'm going to turn it back over to Dr. Peace. And I'm going to turn it over to Andre Gouchard if he's back there. I really can't see him. Did he leave? Okay. I want you to know that I've had a very good time out on this date with you, that we've been out here all day. We've been looking at beautiful artwork and beautiful people and hearing beautiful music and eating beautiful food. And now it's time for us to bring this program to a close. But remember that artists work every day, and some of them work every night as well. And art, beautiful art, is available to you at all times from these artists. And if you wish to contact any artist about any of the work that you see on any of the shows at any time, we welcome your phone calls to 708-747-2973. 747-2973, area code 708, and we will certainly contact them for you and let them know that you are interested in their work. Support the arts, support the community. Hotep.
Ciao. Yeah, very nice.